couple things stood out to me from this again. He's so much greater than the pain. Amen? He is so much greater than the pain, than the frustration, than the circumstances that are going on. And Lord, bring what brings you glory. If it's my going through stuff that brings you glory, then Jesus, I trust you enough to pray, Jesus, bring the rain. Bring those circumstances. Turn with me, please, to Romans chapter 5. Romans chapter 5. We're going to read this short portion of Scripture actually in two versions. One that we're used to and that maybe a lot of you have in hand or on phone. <laughs> and then one that says it a little bit differently. Romans chapter 5, begin with verse 1. For those who are picking up with us this morning on online, we just listened to the story and I would, or the song, and I would encourage you to listen to the song by Mercy Me, Bring the Rain. It will bring the message together. Romans chapter 5, beginning with verse 1. I'm reading it first from the New International Version. Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ through whom we have gained access by faith into this grace in which we now stand. I want you to lift your eyes from the Bible. I want you to turn your eyes to the ceiling representing God and say to him, I am thankful I stand in your grace. Say it. I am thankful I stand in your grace. What is grace? Unmerited, undeserved favor. We stand in the favor of God. In the middle of coronavirus, you and I stand in the midst of God's grace, his favor. And we boast in the hope of the glory of God. Not only so, but we also glory in our sufferings because we know that suffering produces perseverance. Perseverance, character, and character, hope. And hope does not put us to shame because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. Okay, I want you to close your eyes unless you have the living Bible on your phone or in hand. I want you to close your eyes and I want you just to listen to those very same verses in the living Bible that says, so now, since we have been made right in God's sight by faith in his promises, we can have real peace with him because of what Jesus Christ, our Lord, has done for us. For because of our faith, he has brought us into this place of highest privilege where we now stand. And we confidently and joyfully look forward to actually becoming all that God has had in mind for us to be. We can rejoice too when we run into problems and trials, for we know that they are good for us. They help us learn to be patient. And patience develops strength of character in us and helps us to trust God more each time we use it until finally our hope and faith are strong and steady. Then when that happens, we are able to hold our heads high no matter what happens and know that all is well. For we know how dearly God loves us. And we feel this warm love everywhere within us because God has given us the Holy Spirit to fill our hearts with his love. We just read about a divine process that God works into each of our lives as we let him. 
It's a divine process. We look at Romans 5, verse 3, and I'm going to be re-quoting this from the Living Bible. We can rejoice, verse 3, in problems and trials, for that we know they are good for us. Now, this is a jumbo shrimp, if ever there was a jumbo shrimp comparison. Problems and trials are good for us. There's a dash, and it gives us the reason. They help us learn to be patient. How do problems and trials help us become patient? Anytime that we have to wait for something, it helps us learn to be more patient. I'm learning from this that we're not born patient. Were you born patient? They're the rare, rare few. We have to learn to be patient. Anytime we have to wait for something, we learn patience. Think of an eight and a half month pregnant mother. Those of you who've been there, how patient were you at eight and a half months? Get this out of me! <laughs> Think about a kid at Christmas time. My brother, whom some of you met about, well, I don't know, two, three years ago when they were here, when he was a kid, he would get so excited on Christmas Eve, he would literally be throwing up. <laughs> and he couldn't enjoy Christmas anyway. <laughs> he was just so excited. He literally got sick. Think about a person who's interviewed for a job promotion. How patient are they? <laughs> we have to learn to be patient. When we experience a problem or a trial, it very, very seldom works out instantaneously. It becomes necessary for us to wait, but we can redeem, we can make profitable or beneficial that waiting time by committing the whole circumstance to God and allowing him to be glorified in it and through it. We can ask God to teach us what we need to learn from the situation and from the waiting. In Galatians 5, verses 22 and 23, it tells us about the fruit of the Spirit. One of my pet peeves, you want to know? You probably don't care, but I'm going to share it anyway. It's not the fruits of the Spirit. The fruit of the Spirit is. It's not the fruits of the Spirit are. The fruit it's one big thing that the Holy Spirit is wanting to bear out through our life, and it's made up of what? Love, joy, peace, patience. Ding, 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 ding. The fruit of the Spirit. Part of what makes up the fruit of the Spirit is patience. It's one of the characteristics that the Holy Spirit wants to work out in every one of our every one of our lives as Christians. It's not patience is for Nora, patience is for Rita. No. Patience is for us. <laughs> patience is for us. We have to learn patience. And the moment we pray for more patience, God sends us a problem or a trial or a challenge and says, on your mark, get set, wait. Right? We learn patience by waiting. Back to Romans chapter 5, verse 4. It says, and patience does two things. Now, Berean students, don't fail me now. What do you call it? When an inanimate object is given human characteristics, what do you call that? What? What cat? It's called personification. It's like making it a person. Patience 
can't do anything on its own, right? But when it's personified as something that can do something, it says here, patience does two things. It develops strength of character in us and helps us trust God more each time we use it. In other words, the more you learn patient, the more patienter you become. Okay? Patience develops strength of character. Patience helps us stand more firmly on God's promises. And I thought about an old hymn. I think it was written in the 1800s called Standing on the Promises. Verse 2 goes like this. Standing on the promises that cannot fail. God's word not only will not, it cannot fail us. Because God cannot lie. Standing on the promises that cannot fail when the howling storms of doubt and fear assail. Here we are in 2020. Just had an election, I heard. Let's see how it goes. <laughs> 2020. Our mascot will always be the mask and a roll of toilet paper. There are, there are Christmas ornaments out. Did you know that? Of rolls of toilet paper? Let's say 2020. Masks. Let's say 2020. They will always be the 2020 mascots. But when we're in the middle of coronavirus, it's God's word that we can turn to and we can stand on and that will never fail us. Standing on the promises that cannot fail when the howling storms of doubt and fear assail. By the living word of God, I shall prevail. Standing on the promises of God. Let's sing the chorus. Standing, standing. Standing on the promises of God, my Savior. Standing, standing. I'm standing on the promises of God. Amen. Patience helps us stand more firmly on God's promises. Patience causes us to grow up. To become mature. Are you a little more patient today than you were when you were in third grade? <laughs> I hope so. It helps us to grow up. Patience helps us to live more victorious Christian lives. We're much less frustrated when we learn to trust God. Patience helps us to live according to scripture. So we go back to chapter five, verse four, patience develops strength of character and helps us to trust God more each time we use it until finally our hope and faith are strong and steady. Patience helps us trust God more each time we use it, each time we go through a struggle and become a little more patient, our character and integrity become stronger. We become more mature of a Christian. We become more like Jesus. Then the next time, because there will be a next time, the next time patience is required of us, it becomes a little easier to trust that God will work things out for us. Not necessarily in our timing, but in his timing. You see, when we wait, we learn about timing. We learn to trust that his foreknowledge and his timing 
our best for us. We learn to trust that he hears our prayers. We learn to trust that he won't fail us. We learn to trust that he truly will work all things together for our good. Do you see a pattern? We learn to trust. We are not born trusting. Doesn't come naturally. And we see a new God in his holiness. And there develops in us an awe for him. Did you notice in the middle of the song, Bring the Rain? Holy, holy, holy. We develop an awe anew for the holiness of God because every time we wait and every time we see God come through in his faithfulness, that becomes holy ground because God came through. God met me right here and that becomes holy ground. That experience in our lives becomes holy because God met us. God came through. Romans 5 says, Patience develops strength of character. Helps us trust God more each time we use it until finally, that tells me it's not overnight. That tells me it could take a lifetime. <laughs> until finally our hope and faith are strong and steady. Can you honestly say right here and now this morning that your faith is strong and steady? It can take a lot, and it can take it for a long time. It's strong, and it's steady. Each of us needs to take a barometric reading regularly. What would God say about my faith? Can God depend on your faith as he did Job's? You see, God allowed, Satan couldn't do anything without God's knowledge and permission. God allowed Satan to mess with Job. <laughs> because God trusted Job's faith in him. Does God trust your faith in him enough to bring the rain? How is Job characterized? How do we think of Job today? He was a man who was, come on, patient. The patience of Job, right? He became known as that because he patiently endured what God brought into his life and he continued to trust and worship him even when his wife told him, give up on God and die. He took what God allowed in his life and he continued to trust him. Because of that, we speak of the patience of Job. Can you think of some other biblical characters who waited and grew? What about Noah? He worked as he waited. He was told to build an ark. What's an ark? To prepare for the rain. What's rain? You see, up until this point, there'd never been rain. The water, the, the earth was watered by a mist that came up. For the first time, it was going to be watered by water coming down. Noah believed God. 
and he worked. He built that ark. He called the animals. God supernatural. I would love to have watched that. Every zookeeper in the world would have loved to watch that. Animals just obediently coming by the command of God, two by two, to enter the ark. Then there were the 40 days of rain. Noah had to wait, and he grew. What about Abraham, who, by the way, was a contemporary of Job? God made Abraham and Sarah a promise. God told Abraham, your descendants will outnumber the sand on the seashore or the stars above. He didn't have any kids. And he didn't have any kids for several years. He waited for years for God to fulfill his promise. And yes, he got impatient, and we all know what the result of that was. We are still experiencing the result of Abraham's impatience. We need to learn to wait well. Abraham waited. He grew. What about Joseph? Unfair treatment all his life from his brothers to those who were over him. But God. After years of waiting, God came through and showed Joseph his purpose in all of it. What about David? He was made the promise when he was just a teenager that he was to be the next king of Israel. He had to wait years to ascend the throne. What about Daniel? He waited for dinner. He didn't wait for dinner. He waited to see if he was going to be dinner. He waited overnight in a den of lions. He waited. God came through. Mary and Joseph, they had both received promises from an angel. They had to wait. It still took nine months. They went through ridicule. They went through much that we won't even know until we get to sit down over latte with them in heaven and find out what they went through. Mary and Martha, they waited for Jesus to come after Lazarus died. But Jesus had a purpose in the waiting. The disciples on the day of Pentecost, they obediently went to the upper room to wait for the promise of the Father. They didn't even know what it was going to be like, look like, sound like, anything. But they went and they waited. And the Holy Spirit came. There's growth in waiting. It's good for us to be patient. Going back to Romans 5, verse 5, it says, Then when that happens, we've taken a few rabbit trails here. When what happens? When patience helps us to trust God more and our hope and faith become strong and steady. When that happens, we are able to hold our heads high no matter what happens. And know that all is well. We as God's people can hold our heads high during the coronavirus knowing that God is in control. Knowing that all is well in the bigger picture. That means we need have no fear. We know that all is well. Why? For we know how dearly God loves us. And we feel this warm love everywhere within us because God has given us the Holy Spirit to fill our hearts with his love. 
1 John 4, 18 says that perfect love casts out fear. It's the Holy Spirit making God's love real to us in our hearts that drives out the fear, that brings us the full knowledge that all is well. Holy Spirit, thank you. Thank you that you dwell in our hearts. You make Jesus real to us. And you assure us that all is well. Hallelujah. In a situation such as COVID or a difficult situation in our lives or following an election, we know that all is well, that God loves us, and we know the indwelling presence of the Holy Spirit, and there ain't nobody that can take that away from us because he's here. And because we know, we can pray. If this is what brings you glory, God, bring the rain. So what is the purpose in all of this? Let's go back to verse 2 of Romans chapter 5. It says, we confidently and joyfully look forward to actually becoming all that God has had in mind for us to be. That's the purpose in it all. That we would actually become all that God has had in mind for us to be. Our theme this year is seeking God's vision in 2020. God's vision for every one of us is that we would become all that he has in mind for us to be. And I think most of us have only begun to tap into that. See, God hasn't been working in our lives in spite of the coronavirus. He's been working in our lives through the coronavirus. He's been working patience in our lives. Some of us have been waiting months to see grandchildren. We've been waiting months to be able to go back to work. We've been waiting months to be able to sing in church. It's working patience. The problems and trials work patience. Patience develops character. Character helps us learn, learn to trust God so that eventually our hope and faith will be strong and steady. Don't miss out on what this waiting has been working in our lives. Jesus, bring the rain. Because you, God, are greater than the pain. And let's be sure to give him the glory. So where does that put us right now? We are now awaiting his return. I thought of another old hymn. This world is not my home. I'm just a passing through. My treasures are laid up somewhere beyond the blue. The angels beckon me from heaven's open door, and I can't feel at home in this world anymore. Oh, Lord, you know I have no friend like you. If heaven's not my home, then Lord, what will I do? The angels beckon me from heaven's open door, and I can't feel at home in this world 
anymore. We are waiting for, as John wrote, that we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. In other words, we will have a glorified body that will no longer feel pain or get sick or feel lonely. We shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Never again to be parted from him. But even in this world, God is still molding us and making us stronger and more and more like him so that we will be strong until the end and bring him glory through our lives. James chapter 1, verses 2 through 4. James wrote, Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds. Because you know, say I know, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. It seems to me that James and Paul read the same memo. Let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete. Say, I want to be mature and complete. Come on, convince me. Not lacking anything. And moving down in James 1 to verse 12, it says, Blessed, truly happy. Remember, consider it pure joy. Truly happy is the one who perseveres under trial, because having stood the test, that person will receive the crown of life that the Lord has promised to those who who love him. I think you'll all look pretty good in a crown. Then you know what? Our ultimate act of worship will be to cast those crowns at his feet because he alone is worthy. Going back to the book of Romans, chapter 8, verse 18, it says, and this verse was in the video. For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. It will be worth it all. When we see Jesus. Look at the cover of your bulletin. It's no coincidence that what's there is there. Got it? Let's read it out loud together. God has a purpose for your pain. A reason for your struggle. And a reward for your faithfulness. Read the last line again. Okay, turn and read it to the other side of the church. The last line. Trust him. And I think if coronavirus teaches us anything, we need to do that more for each other. We need to turn to each other and say, don't give up. Trust him and don't give up. Because you know what? We're all coronavirusing. But God is faithful to you as he is to me. Lord, thank you that you are still God in it and through it all whether it's coronavirus or it's other illness or it's situations or it's financial need, 
God, you are in it and you are working through it all. There is a purpose in our pain. There is a reason for our struggle and there will be a reward for our faithfulness. Problems and trials are good for us because you will take them, you will use them, and you will strengthen us, you will teach us. You will help us to trust you more. And God, we look forward to that day when we will see you face to face and we will be like you. We'll be home. Keep us strong. Keep us faithful. Keep us steady and strong. In Jesus' name, amen.